So far we've been talking about data, information, but we haven't looked at the other side of the coin. So now I'd like to switch and start talking about operations. In Ruby, they're known as methods. Like a variable, a method has a name. I'm using notepad here because typing everything into IRB gets a little tedious when you go past one line. So you start with the keyword def, which is short for define, and the name that you want to use, in this case, greet. And I'm going to use the puts statement that we saw earlier. I'm going to save that. And in IRB, I'm going to load it. It says fine, it loaded correctly. And now if I type greet, it executes the code puts, well, hello there, so that appears on the screen. And I also get a nil response. The method returns a value, and since I haven't specified anything else, it returns nil. I could change that, of course. In Ruby, whatever value appears at the very end is the value of the method. If I load this again and run greet, you see that it printed, well, hello there on the screen, but returned, nice to meet you, as the value. Now, let me make this distinction a little more clear. When you call a method, you can use that value in an expression, just like you can use a value of a variable in an expression. So I can type greet times two. It prints, well, hello there, and then it returns the value which then gets multiplied by 2, and you get nice to meet you, nice to meet you. We can make this more explicit if you want. There's a keyword in Ruby, return, which makes it clear that this is the value we want to return from the method. It does exactly the same thing. Let's define a method that does something a little more useful. Slightly more useful. Now this method has an argument n. I can call it whatever I want. Eh, maybe we should call it number, just to make it clearer. So we've created this thing called double. And if you call double, you get twice what you put in. The number 15 is stored in number, and then it executes this expression, which produces 30. And since this is the last thing in the method, that's the value that gets returned. Or we could write return number times 2, and that would also work. Of course, Ruby doesn't really care if it's a number. You can also give it a string, and it will use the string's multiplication behavior, and you get two frets. Let's change the definition of this a little bit. A method can have more than one argument. Let's say that this is expected to take an array and an index. And now we're going to say the element of the array at that index is the old value times 2. So that's what we mean by double. We're going to double some member of an array come back here, load it again, now I need an array of numbers, uh, totally at random we'll pick these numbers, so the array is the first argument, and the index is the second, we get back 30 because 15 times 2 is 30. And it also modified the array, so this third element is now 30. There are two things going on here. One is the return value. The method can return something that you can then use in your calculations. And you can also modify objects. That's what's known as a side effect. Now let's suppose that what you wanted to do was double that member of the array, but you want to return the value before it was doubled. Well, we can do it like this. 
we'll define a variable called original. The original value is whatever's in the array at that index. So we do this first. Now we've got a copy of that value here. Now we're going to say array index equals the original value times 2. But we're going to return the original. We load that again. Our numbers array currently contains this. we do this, the value we get back is 42, the original. But in the array, it now contains 84. Now you might wonder what happened to this variable original, which we just created. It doesn't exist. And the reason is because variables have what's known as scope. If you create a variable inside a method like this, it only exists inside of that method. That means if I create another method, another variable original up here, it's completely different from this one down here because it's in a different scope. It comes into existence when this method starts and it goes away as soon as the method ends. Now methods are used very, very heavily in Ruby, so there's a lot of different syntax around them. But let's just cover one nice feature at this time. Let's suppose you want to take an argument, but not all the time. You can invent a default value. If the method is called with a specific argument, that will become the value of name. If it's called without an argument, it will use the string handsome as the default. Now I can use this in the result, I'm going to use the interpolation so that it becomes part of the string. Save that. If I call greet without any arguments, it uses handsome. If I call it with an argument, it'll use that. The other thing to point out is we've been using method calls all along but we've been using them with and without parentheses. Here I typed it with the parentheses, but you can also type this. And generally Ruby will figure out what you mean anyway. The same can be done with this method call. Now what I want you to understand is that all of the calls we've been making up to this point, things like, for example, this one, those are method calls as well. Every operation that takes place is actually a method call. And that's true of other things as well. Let's take some of these operators we've been using so cavalierly. For example, the index operator on an array. You can actually get the same effect by doing this. It's actually a method called open square bracket, close square bracket. Ruby does a little bit of what's known as syntactic sugar. It sees that you put these brackets here and it converts it into a call to this method. But it really is the same thing.